<laughs> what is it? That's a mistake. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, fuck no. Don't eat all of it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Hot Suns, where we have hot questions with even hotter suns. I'm Rushon Evans, and here we have Godzilla enthusiast Blaze Hole McCoy here up, what to what talk up? about his comic book, One Sun. I've been a really big fan of the show for a while. I've always wanted to come on here, but um, now that I'm I'm sitting here looking at them, this one's singeing my eyebrows a little bit. Yeah, you're, uh, I'm not gonna lie, you're in for a roller coaster, man. This one looks like straight up snot. I don't even know <laughs> what to expect, but yeah, let's get into it. Ah, it's okay. To be fair with you, I've never tried any of these either. You don't right. any of them? Let's dive straight into it, okay? Okay. So, sauce number one is called Afternoon Delight. When did the idea for One Sun start and how did it change since then? Um, dude, it, like, I've, so, okay, hold on. Go ahead, go ahead. Like, I guess I've just always wanted some kind of Hawaiian superhero. Like, I'm always looking for Hawaiians in media because I watch a lot of movies, read a lot of comic books. My God, that's delicious. This got a kick to it. I'm not gonna lie. That was great, though. I hope we got the same one. <laughs> that was delicious. We had to. I feel like I've always been work like doing little doodles and sketches and stuff on it. But um, it wasn't until high school where I really started to try to finish the design and try to you know come up with some sort of story. So, what are some inspirations that came from One Sun that you feel are important to get out there? Um, well, I think the number one one is Power Rangers. You know, like. Obviously Koa like he starts off in like the motorcycle helmet and stuff almost direct inspiration from Power Rangers I almost described the story like R-rated Power Rangers. Oh shit. Do I have to eat the wing first? I would <laughs> Maybe yeah, okay. Wait, what's this one called? This one's called banana panic What okay, yeah, so let's go ahead How the fuck first not why was Why the first one harder than the second one? Well, clearly the chef's got it mixed up. It's okay. I'm gonna talk to him later. Yo, the chef's kind of bang though. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, in the power, in the 2017 Power Ranger movie, they put it perfectly. Alpha Five says like different colors, different kids, different colored kids. And it's like that's awesome, but do they ever get to have those tough conversations about like you know with interracial friendships and stuff like mm -hmm. that? And I feel like you know, my you, my best friend and I. My, my creative partner, we're always having, you know, conversations about each other's communities and keeping each other updated about right. it. Right, he sounds like a terrific guy. Oh, he's so handsome. Mm -hmm. He's sexy, you would, you'd kiss him. I would? You would kiss him on the face. Maybe, we'll yeah. see. So next up is Caribbean Cruise Line Carnival Disaster. Why do they mm -hmm. call it that? <clears throat> So in the thank you notes of issue one, when you write a thank you to your parents, you also mention Halo Mega Blocks <laughs> <laughs> and the PlayStation Portable. Uh, you want to elaborate on that? What uh, what significance did that have? That's what I said, look like not for real. But so the significance of that, I come from the film world, or like you know, I want to be a filmmaker at least. That's a potent taste right there. Yeah, that's like. It tastes like sweaty ass crack, dude. Oh, dude, that tastes like a gym sock rotted in the sun. For no, no, that was the carnival. That was the cru carnival cruise. <laughs> you don't even. Caribbean disaster. I had a PlayStation portable, attachable camera, and like fucking uh, Play-Doh, like to keep them like sticking to the ground and stuff. I used to watch like Halo stop, mo like le Mega Block stop motions on YouTube all the time. Mm. But... Do you know around what age you were when you started that? Oh man, probably like, nine or ten my like for my ninth or tenth birthday i don't remember exactly but uh i got a playstation portable and it was like a red and black one it came with god of war and the movie kick ass did you see the clip it was actually pretty good good at getting his ass kicked and so like if we were to trace back me I feel like it started there. We like to call this one acid wash jeans. <laughs> the fuck, dude? All 
All right, so you did mention and you brought it up a couple times that you went to the school called Stinky. Can you talk a little bit about what your experience was like there and I don't know, maybe your childhood oh, in Modesto? You fucking, you're good, bro. You did your digging, man. Um, the teachers were really mean and um, there's this lady, Miss Stinky. Oh, wait, fuck. I don't know if I can say her name. But we'll believe it. Yeah, she, um, she got arrested for embezzling like after I left the school, but that's like, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> so, oh, wow. It was just, it was for, you know, kids who couldn't handle any other school. This smell, you know what this smell like, by the way? Jones barbecue and foot massage. You know what I'm talking about? In the pit. kind of hit that, didn't I? Jones barbecue foot massage. Jones. You got to do a little dance too. Jones barbecue foot massage. Dude, this is like some cookout shit. This is delicious. Oh, but yeah, it was, like, oh. it was one of those like STEM schools. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they like specialized in kids who like could, could learn good about <laughs> science. So we actually- Could learn good about math. <laughs> we did actually have some of our crew had found some old footage. And it seems like you really got your filming off to a good start starting at- Stinky. What was it like getting started with your friends and filming on the streets of Modesto? Oh man, we were dumbasses. Like, real guerrilla filmmaking. Like, we'd be out there in the canals, filming short films and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, downtown, sneaking shots in alleyways. I mean, a lot of it happened in my backyard, honestly, because my parents, like, so supportive. And I think they had, like, they get a kick out of seeing us, like, do stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one looks like it's gonna be hot as fuck, though. Yeah, so we call this one time travel dialysis. <laughs> uh, second place was spirit turbulence. All right, so from time to time, we've noticed that you've posted uh, videos in your old days of hockey. Can you tell us about that and how that brought you to such violence? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, my, my mom actually met my stepfather at a uh, hockey rink. Mm. And so my sister, my uncle were like, like they played hockey long before I was even born, but mm. some of my earliest memories on the streets of fucking Santa Clara playing street hockey, going to Sharks games and stuff like that. But when I was 11, I got tired of watching my sister play. And I, you know, she was a goalie, so I tried playing skater. Yeah, I was hooked for a minute, played on a bunch of travel teams, ended up playing, uh, you know, a lot of state wars, winter wars, tournaments, right. and eventually playing in, in like Junior Olympics. Mm. Um, you made it to the Junior Olympics? Junior Olympics for the Northern Cali team. Yeah. Uh, and I played, I played roller hockey too, which can be like a little bit scrappier. When you hit the ground, you don't slide, you just fucking skid and- Would you be willing to admit that they're just better than you? No, it's not a skill issue, actually. Oh, it's not? No. I think actually when you just like play for that long, you just get really good. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably take a bite of the wing. It is a, oh yeah, fuck me. <laughs> hey, that is delicious though. Okay, okay. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Are you good? Are you gonna be like this for the rest of the interview? Pull it together. <laughs> Where did I go wrong? I lost a friend. And I'm On top of comic books, what would you say about the current state of them right now? Mainstream comic books have been like recycling same shit, especially the big two. I, I forgot to tell you the name of this. This is sewer weed. Oh fuck, dude. Yeah. It fucking tastes like it. Mm -hmm. That is not good. Yeah. What's wrong with we're you? Not, we're not in the spice yet, and I, that just kind of makes me a little more nervous for these last four flavors. What if but, I already uh, ate the atomic one? That'd be the funniest shit. Can show. you imagine? <laughs> we ate the hottest one just casually conversating. You didn't even realize it? Well, now would be probably a good time to mention that we fucked up, and uh, when we ordered the wings, they didn't... They didn't, uh, they didn't label the flavors. So we're at an understanding that you were on a different project, uh, as far as comic book goes, uh, the Maui Strong Anthology. Mm. Uh, what was it like on a gig like that? It was the first like comic writing gig I'd been offered and we raised over $10,000 for charity. Um, I think our goal was $4,000, mm -hmm. which is freaking awesome. I think us, band, like In a way, just a bunch of artists- Banding together, yeah, providing yeah. that community. Exactly, and mm -hmm. I, I, feel that, I think that's the most powerful thing that any kind of art does is bringing a community together, especially mm -hmm. when they see the shared goal and they, they see that the goal is bigger than 
the sum of its parts. You know, and as a Hawaiian living in California, I do struggle with like imposter syndrome and stuff like that. Mm. But in a way for me, it was validating in, in just in the sense that um, I'm not looked at as less than any anybody else who may have grown up more, um, you know, like on the islands more. Right, and that's all something we want is just to feel a place among wherever we are. Absolutely. Just feel welcomed and anything like that. What were some of the challenges that were brought to you um, working on that project? I, I think like the biggest challenge I had was, so I only had 10 pages to do that. And um, I, I tend to write pretty big. So fitting the story that, that I was doing into those 10 pages. And the, the story is called Maui Champion of the Sun which is a very well-known mo'olelo around the islands and around other Pacifica islands. So, um, yeah, I felt like, I felt pressure to get it right. But I think the biggest challenge was like, just fitting uh, that story onto 10 pages. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> what's your question, man? Uh, so, as a filmmaker, um, <laughs> name, <laughs> I, I wanted to talk about uh, some people you might be looking up to or uh, sure. anyone you, you know, I don't know, idolize. Do you have any favorite directors and favorite uh, movies that those directors have made? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite movie, like, first thing that pops up, Creed by Ryan Coogler. Like, I watched his interview and he talked about just being a Rocky fan and, and watching Rocky with his dad. And um, when he, like he, he, he was, after making Fruitvale Station, he really wanted to pitch making Creed to Sylvester Stallone and somehow, some way, got in the room with him. And it like, for me, I took my grandfather to watch it and he was a big fan of Rocky and stuff like that. He showed me a lot of the classic movies that I love. And it was like getting to revisit the Rocky legend, but now like, you know, we're picking up with a new person. And I feel like one son very much does that. Gotcha. as well um, in in some ways uh very very similar to creed i love Zack snyder his dc trilogy is my favorite like superhero trilogy i just think it's very unique to that filmmaker and like nobody else could have made it which to me makes it more valuable and the right, fact that right. like we will never probably get another dc movie with that cast with those characters in the in like the grand scope like it, it was like lord of the rings meets the DC world. His cut of Justice League is just gotcha, like gotcha. fucking insane. So, so far we have Creed, Justice League. You got a third place? Yes. Denis Villeneuve. So he made a film called Sicario back in like 2015. Mm. And it was just like so unsettling, but I loved it and it was beautifully shot. I think Roger Deakins was the cinematographer on that one. Those are just some of them though. There's a ton of like amazing filmmakers right now. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what is it? That's a mistake. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, fuck no. Don't eat all of it. Oh my god. I don't I, I, I damn it breathed it in. <laughs> is this permanent? Man, that one was that was a surprise one. They they we kicked it up a notch on this one. Why? Why? That was too, that was a big jump. How do we how do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I think I'm crying. I think I'm crying. Look, your face is red, man. Okay. There's two more. There's two more questions. Yeah. Well, we could have been wrong about them. Oh, we could have. Oh. All right, okay. Before we move on, one last question. You you seem pretty known among the social media. Fuck. I'm not known for To shit. post anti-MCU propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> what are some things you would say you can improve among what they call the Marvel formula right now? I can't, first of all, I can't fix shit. And I don't know shit about their studio. I don't know how they run shit. But me as a fan, I wish it would improve their quality of the storytelling. I'm dying over here. I think this would be the last episode. Dude, this... <laughs> this feels like the Trinity test in my fucking mouth, dude. You do this fucking every week? Yeah. For how long? 
today. Okay, so we have this next flavor. Our crew decided to call it Oppenheimer 2, Holy The Reckoning. God. Since we're almost done with this, let's, let's get a little deep. This shit hurt my tummy, dude. What's your biggest fear coming out of doing this comic book thing? <laughs> that nobody buys it? Yeah. That nobody thinks it's cool? All right, so we have this last wing. It's called Nightmare, Nightmare, Nightmare. Fuck me. Or Dragon Piss 9000, as others would say. It has a nickname? Yeah. Okay, fuck Sorry. it. You, are you in this with me right yeah, now? I'm in this with you. Okay. You ready? Look right. in my eyes right now. Tell me Tell what me. is the most proudest moment of this comic book like, for you. Like what moment am I most proud of? Yeah. What moment are you most Look me in my eyes. Do you see fear? Do you see fear in my eyes? Hey, shit. Hey, that ain't shit, we fucked up. We fucked up. This is nothing. I knew it. Drag Dragon piss is kind of good. Yeah. It toast to you, bro. So initially this moment was gonna happen at the end of Koa's story. He was gonna go throughout his entire arc wearing the red helmet guy gear with like the red, the red helmet and like the workout jacket and gym shorts. But I was actually getting afraid of somebody doing a moment similar to what I was thinking of shows Koa like rising out of the lava and that's like the full man when he like fully manifests the mana man armor and kind of like adopts this new identity as a superhero. The the real story lies in how he gets those tattoos and who he gets them from. The idea being R rated Power Rangers. Huh? How can we bring that cultural specificity and nuance in a unique way? And so for us it's through the lens of, you know, Western superhero tropes, but then tying them back into indigenous cultures around the world, um, to me, is not only very empowering, but it's it's unique, like to the comic book landscape. It's a way to interact with those cultures that have been suppressed through hundreds of years of colonialism and, you know, um, hateful dogma, honestly, and, and to engage with them in a positive, uplifting way. All right, well, since you made it to the end, we are gonna go ahead and roll out that red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera. Go ahead and tell everybody what you wanna say. You guys can support our Kickstarter now. It's live until March 31st. Um, and we're, as of right now, I mean, I haven't checked my phone, but we are, as of day one, 35% funded, which is, Freaking huge, and we're super grateful for you guys. So yeah, thanks for checking out this video. All right. Fucking. I'm Rushon Evans, this is Blaze Hole McCoy, and this is One Sign. Hot signs, fuck. Say bye, mom. Bye, mom. <laughs>